Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia Know the Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolover. And right now, as you can see, we've gone to war with Kazakhstan, or the Kazakh National Republic, because, well, we can. Nor sometimes, I like to wait until we take out everyone else in Russia before we go to Kazakhstan, but I figured, ah, eh, no one else is going to get involved. We might as well try to take them out as fast as we can and basically just core their territory. So this way, we can weaken our line uh, against whoever wins here, and then hopefully we can do well like we did in the last video. But, too old to run. It won't shut, Love panted, pushing down on the lid of, lid of the suitcase to no avail. He thrust it open and cursed, snatching the doll and throwing it across the room. The lid closed shut. Ivana cried out and bursting into tears. <clears throat> Take her outside, he called out to his wife, ignoring his daughter's wails and hurrying upstairs. How he wanted to comfort her, hold her in his arms and tell her it was going to be alright, but he couldn't. Time was of the essence. Georgi was in the same armchair he had nestled in about an hour ago, resting his wrinkled hands across his belly contently. Lev stared at him in horror. I told you to pack, Lev Screen. We have to go now. If it's all the same to you, I'm about to have a nap, Georgi muttered, visibly annoyed. Please, Grandfather, they'll be coming soon. The black shirts will be coming. I'm old, not seen, Al Gregory <clears throat> chuckled. Or Georgi chuckled. I have no doubt these F dudes will pay me a visit. Let them come. I've dealt with enough anti Semites in my time. He saw Lev's desperate expression and sighed deeply. Get out of here, child. Take the family. I will pray for your safety, but don't fool yourself into thinking I'm moving for anyone. I ran from the Bolsheviks. I ran from the war. I've jumped from warlord to warlord. I'm tired of running, you winked. Go on, grandson. Have a good life. The time comes when a man must stand his ground. But let's go right on in and have a sip of our good old, pretty warm, pretty hot coffee. As you can see, not too bad. And actually, off screen, we were able to finally make a tank division. 40 tanks, not bad. And screw it, we're just going to keep boosting up that budget because we love boosting, boosting, boosting budgets here. And we've just finished up the Second Party Congress, which I don't think I read yesterday, but the time has come. The boss has announced for, this, for the Second Congress of the Russian F Party. While there has been some confusion as to why this Congress would even be necessary, especially considering how no voice within the party dared to disagree, disagree with the boss's ideas, it has become clear that the continual bickering between Bolotov and Shekharev has become intolerable for the head of the RFP. The boss has called the Congress to, to order for one very specific purpose, to remind both Bolotov and Shekharev, who was in charge, and that they would be wise to heed the reminder. For the Vaz, no one is too useful or untouchable. Dispel the black shirt, not bad. Dispatch the OOB. I kind of like this. I like this one, though. The futility of resistance. But we did create the OOB, so I want to make sure that they're not too strong. Uh, let's see. We might do this one. Hmm... Ooh, I don't think it really matters at this point too much, but we did do... Actually, how much support? Oh, they don't have that much support, so we can probably do this at them. Especially the OOB. The Black Church, as an organization, is inherently unsuited for the integration of Central Siberia. They're far too overstretched in terms of what they're able to do, especially considering that they're already occupied in the Far East, pacifying communists and current nationalists. The OOB, the Autoridia Ovespecinia Bezospasnosti, Bolotov's secret assistance squads, have been drilling for years now in preparation for domestic pacification and rooting out the traitors and seditious elements within our territories. And while they might not fill the same political role that the Black Church do, they certainly know how to scare. Straight, straight the population. Why is this one? Huh? Well, I mean, either one, really. I like both. I'm just, uh... Okay, so, the thing I'm thinking about right now is that Tino 2 might come out someday, and if we go down enough with ultra-nationalism, there might be a coup to remove Constant Konstantin Rojevsky. So, I think actually doing this one, if I come back to this, when Tiono gets Tiono 2 comes out, and we do a mirror again, probably going down this route would actually be better to do, so maybe we'll save this one for that one. So, dispatch the black shirts. The black shirts, having long acted as both the black bone and the long arm of the Russian F party, are the natural choice to play the role of the pacifiers for Central Siberia. They know well how to inflict terror upon our enemies, and are experienced in ro rooting out Jews and communists so effective that, that many in the Far East already refer to them as the Vaz Hounds. They rightfully so do not take offense to the moniker, but instead revel in it, taking pride in the fact that they are able to do their job so effectively. They are to pacify the area, by any means necessary. The Vaz is ordered that they break the enemies of the Russian people among the populace of Central Siberia by any means necessary, and that, th that is what they shall do. Another Congress of the Russian Fascist Party. The silence of the room was overwhelming. Party comrades shuffled the papers and coughed awkwardly as he waited for the Vaz to speak. At last, Rozhevsky cleared his throat and scanned his cruel eyes across the room. My Soroniki, Rozhevsky began the Second Congress of the Russian Fascist Party is now in session. Some of you may be wondering why I would call such a meeting. After all, has the party not transcended into glorious new heights? Has unity and strength not brought Central Siberia to heal? Sycophantic murmurs of agreement broke out throughout the room. The house may look grand, may look powerful, and may look unyielding, but... What happens if the foundations are weak? It collapses in on itself. 
The murmurs grew louder and the nodding more vigorous. Rozhevsky slammed his fist under the table and silence fell across the room. Do you think I'm a bad word idiot? Do you think me blind to the infighting between Bolotov and Shekarev? Alexander Bolotov and Grigory Shekarev exchanged or glanced at each other with pale faces. Now let me make one thing clear, Rozhevsky spat. I am the Vaz. I am the party. None of you are untouchable. None of you. If you threaten the stability of all we have achieved, your carcasses will be tossed into the frozen pit. He pointed aggressively at the two men. History will view you as heroes, or will not remember you at all. You decide your fate. A final ultimatum. And we'll take the worthy army professionalism. Uh, this stuff is okay. Yeah. We, that's probably pretty good to do, because that lasts for an entire year. Uh, uh, academic base. Yeah, I'll probably do a loyal council first to get rid of this as fast as possible. Now that the Congress has concluded, it's becoming apparent that there are still some within the council who plot the Vaz's downfall. The original rounds of purges aimed at cementing Rodzievsky's rule was highly effective, but the traitors were much more deeply rooted than previously thought. While much smaller lists of traitors, seditionists, and dissenters have been concocted, this time almost entirely composed of high-ranking Russian fascist party members. Each name on the list is more prominent than the last. But the Vaz has no tolerance for even a modicum of disloyalty. Konstantin Rozevsky is a Russian fascist party, and the Russian fascist party is Konstantin Rozhevsky. To wrong one is to wrong the other. Clearly, Bolotov and Shukrov missed some of the traitors in the first round of purges. The Vaz will not make the same mistake again. The Futility of Resistance The rain pounded down from the dark night sky, liquefying the hard mud. A ragged man stumbled forwards and fell into the slopey dirt, or sloppy dirt, moaning in pain and as a cacophony of crackles erupted behind him. Get the bad word up, one of the armed thugs roared. The fat feet were stuffed into black boots. <clears throat> Their bulky torsos, torsos were straining against black shirts. Their square heads were squeezed into the black military caps. A bloody cluster of men they were escorting kept their heads to the ground. The more defiant had already been shot. Some of them were refugee Sabinites. Others were black army remnants. A few were Democrats hailing from the fallen republic. All of them had dared to resist the new tyranny of the Russian fascist party. One of the black shirts complained about the rain, and the partisans were quickly pushed up against the wall. They alternatively cried out for freedom, for democracy, for the revolution. Nothing could be heard over the pouring rain, except for the gunshots that followed. The walls were painted red. Bang, bang. I do have to say, though, um, I know this is just a game and all, but look how, how, look how well we've done with the GDP. Um, this is just, this shows that, you know, apparently national socialism can actually work in real life, right? <laughs> and it can absolutely work. National Socialism totally can work in real life. Because look at our GDP. That is perfect. That is perfect. And we're just just, 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 just destroying everybody over here. Oh, that's completely already nice. Cool. I guess we'll keep doing that. A loyal council is nice to have. The final purge. The party was on... Omnipotent, omnipotent. The party was omniscient. The, the party was not pure, and we we care about purity here. Despite all that the balls had achieved, dissent still festered in the upper echelons of the Russian fascist party like a disease that keeps the host weak and, and, and infirm. Those who had long doubted Rozhevsky continued to scurry through the corridors of power, conspiring behind his back and plotting his removal from power. They wanted someone younger, someone safer, someone more pliable to their whims. The fact that he had tolerated such men for so long spoke volumes to his former desperation. Now, however, it was time for change. Rozhevsky had drawn up the list with sadistic satisfaction. Bolotov had provided his own useful contributions, of course, targeting those who were allegedly plotting against the state. From the lowliest blackshirt to the highest council member, none would be spared the Vaz justice. Some of the executions would be brutal, of course, to strike fear into any remaining weasels on the Supreme Council. Fortunate enough to escape the bullet. Toss them into the pits. Oh, we might as well map All quiet. Oh, look at that. Um, I do want to get that one, so... Take the worthy. Not everyone is fit for membership in the Russian fascist party, especially those former politicians and warlords that populated Central Siberia. They are, at the end of the day, diehard ideologues, and the ones who swear that they aren't even worse would be infiltrators working to destroy the Russian fascist party from within. While the top and middle echelons of the former administrations of Central Siberia are fit for a little more than firing squad or labor camps, those below them, the so-called paper pushers, are the people denied providence and success by those that were once above them. A thorough examination of these individuals will surely turn out some worthwhile candidates for party membership and administrative roles in Siberia. Also, there was one comment asking if, uh, once we unify all of Russia, can we take out, uh, like, Rex Commissary and Muscovine? Unfortunately, all unifiers currently cannot do that. Eventually, someday they will, but I know it is a little disappointing that they cannot, so that does suck. But we can, yeah. Someday, maybe. Hopefully. I'm not construction. All quiet. The shouts of protest, the jangle of cuffs, the crack of gunfire have fallen silent. Oh, yes, please. The paranoia of the Vals has been sated, and its enemies have either fled or been eliminated. 
Shekarev's Black Shirts relax back into the routines of suspicion and watchfulness, and Boltov compiles new lists for the Vaz to examine in time. More will be put against the wall, and the Vaz will find new opposition to fear among even his most loyal supporters and followers. But for now, the executions have dropped a number, and the Vaz focuses on other matters. Our rule secure for now. United in practice. The Free All-Russian Army, by far the most successful armed force Russia has ever seen in decades, swept across the meek opposition as they moved to see central Siberia, securing the cities and burning villages that resisted. The hordes of enemies, how many times more numerous than us, now lay defeated and shamed. If you'd like to read about this one, though, please go right ahead. However, it would be foolish to, like we did before, simply send these wretches to the labor camps. We always knew that the conquest of Siberia would be difficult, simply because the land that we held was much less populated than our opponent's territory. As we go west, things will only get worse. These defeated soldiers will have to be integrated into our army if we are to have any chance at completing the Vaz vision. They will be retrained under the supervision of the officers, their new expectations set properly, and their guns trained on the enemy. We'll get back to the schools. Eventually. Eventually. It'll take some time, but we'll get back to the schools. Eventually. And there we have it, my friends. Not too bad. Not too good, but not too bad. Uh, just in case, there you go. And let's go acquire everything. It's going to cost us some PP every single day. About one. That's not bad. 1.35. That's really, really good. I'd like to go to the next stage, so. But we have to wait just a little bit. And Kim Il Sung is still here, which sucks, but whatever. And uh, a subservient party. The Supreme Council has been for quite some time in an issue with the Vaz. They had, at least on paper, the ability to vote on things such as legislation, party membership, and other increasingly trivial matters, of course. The votes never diverged much from the will of the Vaz, but Rajevsky is always worried that, if they really intended to, the Supreme Council could absolutely veto any progress that he would have wanted to make. And <clears throat> this fact has caused the Vaz stress. As such, one of the final actions of the Supreme Party, or the Second Party Congress, was to have the Supreme Council take one last vote to abolish this council's ability to do just that. Unsurprisingly, the vote was passed unanimously. Nice. No voting? Just the way we like it. It's minus seven billion. My goodness, that is so good. How long will this take to core these places? Oh, let's look. What was it, less than a month, right? Or something like that? Oh, uh, it's low, about a month. That's not bad. That's not bad. 81 billion. That's really good. The dawn of a new Russia. Now that the party has been once more been purified, and the political side of the all-Russian government has been dealt with, the party pacified, the Vaz lieutenants reminded other place, there comes a new era in Russian history, the dawn of a Russia unadulterated by Jews, commies, and those who seek to harm the Russian nation. The Vaz has announced the beginning of a new stage in the Russian fascist party's so-called reclamation of Russia. In a speech entitled The Dawn of a New Russia, he outlined that the final traitors and threats to his rule have been rooted out and dealt with, and while the Russian people toil onwards, he has begun planning for the final step in national reunification. Like all of his speeches, it ended with the RFP's infamous motto, For God, Nation, and, of course, Labor. For without God, Nation, and Labor, what do we have? Nothing. That's right, everyone. That's right. The Greatness of the Vaz. As he did every morning before school. Andre turned on the small TV and sat down to wait while his mother prepared breakfast on any normal day. He would watch his favorite program, but today was not a normal day. Today, the airwaves across the state had been preempted for a speech by the Vaz Konstantin Rozhevsky. Andre had recently reached the age where he was required to join the little ones, and so he had been made very well aware of what the Vaz had done for Russia. Yeah, and so, uh, for Russians, for Russians like him, it had been a political awakening, and Andre had taken to it with great enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, indeed. My apologies about this. He was likely to become one of the youngest junior leaders in his section. As the Vaz spoke of, of yet more recent triumphs, Andre could feel his chest swell with pride. This man, the visionary, had taken a stand against the Mongols, the traitors, the foreigners, and the parasites, and emerged victorious against them all. He had shaped a strong nation for boys like Andre to grow strong in, and Andre knew now that there was no greater figure to emulate and no greater position to aspire to, even if there was only one man who could ever fill it. His mother called him for breakfast, interrupting the Vaz's words, and Andre screamed for her to be quiet. He could not, would not miss a word. The boss spoke for all of them, and for them all. His senior leader told him, and it was their duty to always listen. Andre would listen, Andre would obey, Andre would teach others to do the same, and one day Andre would meet the great Vaz, he would find a way, he would prove himself worthy. The greatness of the Vaz cannot be denied. The Don of New Russia, though. Very good. What else do we have here? Oh, goodbye, Japanese stuff, yeah, trucks. Oh, we can prepare for the unification war? Might as well. I'll just grab all the stuff while we can. Nice. A grand showdown. The final conflict. United in vision. 
There is one vision for the future of Russia, one vision that is worth talking about. That vision is of the Vaz, Konstantin Rozhevsky. He knows the way forward for Russia, and to doubt him would be tantamount to the betrayal of the Russian state. Thus, any true Russian knows, or would know, that they should be united in vision. The Vaz vision, which will forge the way forward for a strong and independent Russia, one that is free from the tyranny of the Bolshevik and the oppression of the Jew. Of course, all true Russians would think this, but it would be it is, it is important to make sure that they are reminded of this in our new territories. The Vaz works shall be distributed and made mandatory reading so that all can understand the importance of the Vaz's mission. Nice. It's fine. Keep spending. That's totally fine with us. Is that it? That is another tank division. Nice. I should really put the tanks together, but whatever. It's fine for now. Look at that. Everything's improving. Everything is going pretty darn nicely. Pretty darn nicely. United Envision. And then we come so far... Oh, with that stuff, I do want to do this stuff next, just so we can get some more stuff every month, and, uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll wait, since we already got, looks, looks like we already got all the research stuff anyways, expertise, I mean, actually, for expertise, if you want to talk about expertise, I mean, we're already on ex experience, we're just one level below an innovative industry, which is very good, so, infiltrate Russian institutions, why not, not bad, not bad, and my apologies about that sound, that was apparently from Discord, I didn't know that was still connected. My apologies about that. We've come so far. From the darkest days of the Vaz residents at Zaya to the conquest of the Splitters and Kamis, until now, as the all-free Russian army parades down the streets of Novosibirsk, the Russian fascist party has done well for itself. Some even whisper that the Vaz himself is surprised, if not happy, about above all of what he, he and his administration have accomplished. There's still plenty to do, but there's also plenty to celebrate. The Vaz has already begun forging his free, strong, and independent Russia. It's important to reflect back upon all that Konstantin Rozhevsky has done for the people. Ah, look at that manpower. That's what we exactly wanted. Lots and lots of manpower. The prodigal son, though, my friends. As well as advancing the next stage. Yay! There you go. The number of arrests have decreased, Voss. The tireless efforts of my men have led to a general decrease in subversive activity. And the agitators have made their presence hidden for fear of our retribution. We are well armed from the industry of Central Siberia, and preparations for the war for the West have begun. Rozhevsky was unimpressed. You sure? Well, on what basis do you have for this, Shekarev? The number of arrests have decre decreased. Reports of anti-state thought in the ranks are decreasing from the small numbers they were at already. Our reign is becoming more secure every single day. Alexander Boltov said nothing as the black shirt leader continued to extol his successes. Patience was critical, for the Vaz had little to spare these days, even for his most trusted advisors. Then why are you focusing your efforts on internal matters, or have you forgotten there is a war to fight? <clears throat> My apologies about that again. The enemy no longer lies within if you have done your job properly. Silence reigned over the office before a whisper from the Vaz. Have you done your job, Gregory? Shekarev stammered for a moment before Rajevsky interrupted him. Get me a report on the state of our armed forces now. A hastily stammered affirmation and a hasty exit later. Boltov and the Vaz were alone. He still thinks that we are in the old days, Alexander. The enemy within has been beaten down and cannot hope to dislodge us. The enemy to the west is false and weak pretender to the leadership of the Russian people. But, even farther west, the Germans claim a legacy of national socialism, which they do not deserve. The pathetic attempts to uphold their facade will not, not fail in the face of the true heirs. The exiles return at the point of a sword. More political power, war support, and national socialism? Sign us up. Look at that beautiful manpower. Oh, I love it. But, factories, guys. Factories, factories, factories. No one shall sleep or make ro roads until we have maxed out factories. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. It is 1971. So, all this stuff is done, which is cool. We already have the electronics as well. Radar, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'd rather get planes. There you go. Improved jet cast. Sign us up. Sign us up. Oh, look at that. Free millies? Oh, we must have cored the things. That's nice. Get some more tanks. Oh, wow. We need way more aluminum. Oh, that's fine. There you go. We need them for planes and get some... Oh, uh, rubber? We have, we don't have any more space for... Oh, yeah, we do. There you go. We can get some rubber there. It's fine. Oh, there you go, too. I don't mind importing some more. Because we have so many civvies anyway, so I don't really mind doing this. There you go. We've come so far, my friends. So far. And with so much left to do. Even if you recognize how far the Russian fascist party has come, it's still not enough. To our west lay the Jewish puppets and Bolshevik remnants. Further than them are the perfidious Germans themselves little more than a broken people clinging to a system they refuse to admit they, they have failed in maintaining. The Vaz's work is cut out for them, and by extension, the people of Russia have their work cut out for them. 
The unification of our motherland is paramount, and the crossing of the Urals will be no small task. And beyond our unification lays a great next challenge, Germany. And we shall not waver, we shall not rest. Our purpose, almost fatalistic in its inevitability, is to restore the lost glory to our motherland for God, nation, and labor. Retracing our steps. How did we get here? This question had been on the mind of the Vaz for days. He had grown up amidst violence in Blagoveshensk and fled from his home at 18. Now, after nearly 50 years of struggle, he had returned. He thought that he would return in chains after the betrayal by the Japanese <clears throat> or Bolshevik sympathizers or sold out by his own like the traitor Makovsky. But instead, he returned to Caesar at the head of an army of the troop. He still finally remembered the years in Habin, waiting for an opportunity, sniffing out traitors and Jews to give them what they deserved. But age had dulled his desire for such indulgences, and the wild ambivalence of Habin had given way to the former Communist Party headquarters in Novosibirsk. The bitter cold days, or the bitter cold of desolate Zaya, had left as well, and the warmth of a heated office gave his aged body comfort in his duties. The struggles of those days, four years in exile, made him stronger, and those who served with him. <clears throat> Bolotov, that violent and unpredictable sycophant, had also grown into an effective soldier for National Socialism through years of hard living. Yes, it was the exile that separated the ones who had remained true to National Socialism from the self-preserving power seekers, the Petlins of the world, the dudes who had sent him back years, stolen his woman, and wasted thousands of Russian lives in a feudal struggle against the inevitable rise of the one Vaz. The struggle would have to continue for Russia to survive. The mewling of the cat interrupted his thoughts. Ah, Mura. And the Vaz took it into his arms, stroking it softer as he thought of coming victories, and of what of the future? It's weird, because I'm... Because someone did say there is another portrait, and there actually is another portrait of Konstantin Rajewski here. So I'm kind of wondering when that's going to happen. Like, uh, he has a beard, which is really cool, but still. Beard, beard. Cool. And we have 37 divisions. We're ready to go. These guys, this is why we have to take out these decadent soldiers. They have almost exact number of factories. If we take them out, we'll get like 230-some factories. Like, almost 240. This is why the West is decadent weak. Look at all that. This, at least this part of Russia, so. An empty glass. But let them kill each other first. The ministers had assembled. <clears throat> Discussion has been had. Preparations have been made. And at the end of it all, long into the night, the Vaz stood alone in the conference room, overlooking the table. Type documents cluttered the surface of the table, outlining troop movements and supply lines, but the Vaz had given his attention to the map. The borders of old Russia, picked at by the vultures of Japan and above all Germany. The western weaklings would fall first, and Muscovine, and the borders would be restored. And then, perhaps they would be march further and show the German degenerates how far they had fallen from the true path. The Vaz grasped for the bottle by his side, opened it with practice, ease, and then... His thoughts raced. Memories of a half-century in exile, the battles of the reunification wars, the end of the chair of and the knowledge of what he needed, strength. He had been a weakened cripple, relying on the crutches of the other fascists and alcohol to make it here. And as he had advanced, they had been kicked away by him one by one. Makovsky the traitor, the violent thugs, Shekharov and Bolotov, and now this destructive, a pitable habit had become unnecessary. All self-doubt had left his mind. Traitors would quell him before... Well, before him, would quell before him, and not dare to enact their plots. The army of the Jew would be obey his command, marching to Moscow, maybe even onwards. The bottle stood alone, unflinching and un imperious. The bottle gave a solid clink as he forcefully set it upon the table and screwed the cap back on, not today. And in the name of the Vaz, we advance no more alcohol. <laughs> well, I'll drink my water. Ah, but better weapons, nice. Mm. More, oh, that's so good. That's so much more land out attack. Throw him in, boys. Throw him in. And we've got another one, too. How many divisions does each side have? Because we could probably just take them out, honestly. Like, take both out at the same time. So, they have 23 divisions. These guys have quite a few more, but they, of course, they have no manpower as well. Stockpile-wise, they're looking... No artillery. No guns. No artillery. No guns. I think we just we just mop them up. Uh, is this... What is this? Just Japanese stuff? That's fine. Yeah, we're pretty much done with that, so... I'd love to do this, but this just takes so long. I should have done this one earlier, but it's fine. Source foreign materials? Why not? That's fine with us. Industrial espionage? Surveillance stuff? Well, we'll put one in each group here. Your Katerinburg. And there goes the Shah of Iran. Goodbye, Shah of Iran. Have a good day. Well, I guess you're dead now, so it doesn't even really matter too much. And we'll see what both these guys have. Um, wow, look how weak they are. My goodness. So, <clears throat> resource extraction at this point in time doesn't really matter. And we'll go to war when when we can, so. Uh, I'll grab some of that. That'd be good.
And Iran has fallen into disrepair. Nice. That's looking better. Hey, look at that manpower. Wow, how do we get more manpower that way? Oh. Wow, 220. Oh, that's 22, I mean. Not 220. And we're currently 16 for that. That's not bad. I do want to cut down the debt to nothing, though. We might be able to get there, though. Source for materials. Expand the Siberian mines. Very, very good. More infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah, I suppose we could improve infrastructure here, too. But civvies are first. Nice. What is that? Oh, military budget boost? That's fine. Our demobilizing notes. Go back up. Go back up. Sweep westwards. Well, we might as well, right? Both these guys basically can't do anything against us. Is that against both of them at the same time? That probably should be. If you like to read about improved academic base, please go right ahead. That's something to be celebrated, though. Oh, yeah, we go to war with both of them. That's fine. Nice. Very good. Second night of the long knives. Very good. To last forever. Cut, 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 cut. Our GDP growth is almost the same as our annual debt increase, but that's fine. Oh, there goes those guys. Goodbye. Building, 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 building. And chase the sun. Nice. That better cast, yes, please. Actually. Even more, why not? So like budget boost. Oh, no, 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 no. We want to spend more. Produce, produce. We have so much PP. This is one of the rare campaigns where we have so much extra PP just lying around. Yeah, Konstantin Rojewski and Anur, they're a lot of fun. Early on, it was, it like, if you're still here and watching, thank you. But, like, you saw how difficult it was, probably, with trying to fight the Divine Man at Siberia at, almost immediately after trying to take out Baratia under Salvin, who just had an enormous amount of divisions, or just manpower somehow. Just so much manpower, which... As you probably could tell, pissed me off quite a bit, but, you know, whatever. But, yeah. Other than that, like, once you get through that stage, everything else is, can be quite a bit easier if you know what you're doing, so. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, yes. Get rid of Kim Il-sung. Okay, so, wars. We've already killed off 11, 13,000 of them. 15,000 of them. 22 divisions. Yeah, Yeltsin. Yeah, you're not going to survive this one round. Not today. And as well as Tukhachevsky. I thought it was... Oh, there's a guy that won. Chase the sun. And now we get even more PP. Cool. So even if we're we're at war with these guys, and if even if they even if the WRF takes up the West Siberian Republic, it doesn't even matter. Since they won't be able to court fast enough, so hopefully. Eh, I could be wrong about that, but they probably won't be able to able to court stuff fast enough, so that'd be good. Um there you go. Trade-wise, how we doing? Ah, yes, that's what that's what I want to come back to. Nice. Even more civvies. Actually, we have the thing here too. I forgot about that. There you go. Only killed off 70, 80,000 of them. Is that all? Eighty thousand? Oh, oh, they took it. That sucks. What else is? Oh, what the heck? Well, kill every last one of them. Might as well activate that one now, too, right? Might as well. There you go. And boom. They won't be able to core anything here, so. So, yeah, this should all be uncored for them. That's good. So, they really have no manpower then. 50,000 are dead. We have more than. Well, we almost have doubled their divisions. No, not quite. That's numbers. I can't add, apparently. Uh, good. Oh, we can get to this down, too. Nice. And, my friends, national socialism is done for us here. We, because of our belief in the Nazi ideals, properly impl implemented, we have no debt. Look at that. Beautiful. No debt. An insane amount of GDP. Well, at least a pretty good amount. Especially since we don't own all of Western Russia yet, but... Rajevsky knows what he's doing. Alexander Pavlov, anything for us? No, he's a mountaineer though, that's pretty cool. He's really good in defense though. Would you guys like to attack? They have, well, now we have more than double the divisions. 100,000 manpower left, not bad. Uh, that's a bit too much manpower for us though. Hello, would you know? I think we're, I think I know how to do this. I'm pretty sure I know how to do that. I could be wrong. I've only been playing Hoi 4 for like four or five years now, at the time of this recording. 
but I think I know how to play. Usually, I still don't know. I'm not perfect at the game. And I often ask you guys if you have any suggestions for me how to prove. So, pretty good. Ah, screw it. We don't need this anymore then. Let's get the manpower. Actually, screw it. Do this one too. Man, if 202 was out already, I'd love to continue this campaign. See how far we can get by beating up the Germans. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Where are the tanks? Can you just head on over to, like, Arkhangos? Just keep moving. Just keep, keep going. No, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. Keep doing that. That's good. Minus 13 billion. My goodness. That is so good. Um, Army of Professionalism probably won't go up now. Oh, we might get better industrial equipment, though. That'd be really cool. Resource efficiency gain. Oh, we'll grab some rubber. Let's grab some rubber. Trade-wise... There you go. We got more civvies back. Do we get more millies too? Hey, we might have. That's pretty good. Love those planes. My goodness. That is so good. Passage fence. Very cool. There goes Bart of Iran. We've lost 20,000 versus 160,000. We have up to 17 divisions left. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Guys, would you like to keep going? Like, for realsies. Eh, keep spending, who cares? Keep spending. And over here, we're going to go grab some more breakthrough and defense. Which we don't really need at this point anymore. They now have 15 divisions max. Ah, Gorky. There's a submod for Gorky that will come out eventually, which I, I'm kind of interested in learn, looking at someday. I can't wait for the submods to, uh, you know, more submods for TNO to come out. They seem like a lot of fun. Oh, and there goes a the tank division, nice. Oh, is that it? No, that's probably for Iran. Oh, that is it. Nice, look at that. Uh, reunify the motherland. We will do that very soon. Might as well core everything here if we possibly can, because we can. All right, my friends. Rajevsky has done it. The unification of Russia. The long dark shadow of Konstantin Rajevsky and his Russian fascist party, the Far East, seems to have cast itself further. Today, in a grand speech on the balcony of the Parliament building in the Ust Sizlovsk. The so-called Vals of Russia announces Russian reunification with disturbing reports of atrocities committed upon Jews within Russia. It seems that Rozhevsky's control of the nation has already been cemented. The bizarre thesis of the RFP's vision for Russia has become an incredibly frightening reality as Rozhevsky's forces swarmed westwards. His speech announcing the unification of Russia also included virulent, virulent hatred towards those who referred to as the perfidious Germans, claiming that the Germans had failed in the forging a national socialist society and called upon all true Russians to serve in what appears to be an upcoming conflict between the two fascist governments. It seems that only time will tell what the future of the new national Russian state. What? National socialists are different from fascists, apparently. All hail to the ones you've lost. Hmm. Well then. Okay. Don't bend. Don't water down. Don't try to make it logical. Don't edit your own soul according to the fashion. Rather, make your most intense obsessions mercilessly. Franz Kafka. No more the fool. Oh. Hmm. That should be it, right? That. That should be it, right? Is that not it? Um. Usually you get the thing saying, oh, and that's it. So. I think that should be it. Um, I guess we could try this one, though. I wonder what happens. Let's just do decision dot no checks. Let's see what happens. I just want to see what happens, just because that seems, seems really cool, but... Okay, there we go. A shadow cast. In the city of Novosibirsk, a crowd is gathered in the central area once known as Lenin Square. Now renamed Spasovsky Square after the late ideologue and with the old Bolshevik st statues torn down and shattered. At the center of the square, atop a quickly built stage and surrounded by armed black shirts glaring down at the gathered people. My fellow Russians, Rozhevsky began, all but growling out the words. At long last, all of Russia stands united under one state, one people, one boss. <clears throat> Be proud of yourselves, for at last we can bring about a national rebirth and crush all those who brought us low. Although some of those in the crowd looked hesitant, most cheered this great accomplishment. 
After all, they reason, no government could be worse than the chaos they had gone through, could it? A wild grin on his face, Rozhevsky let them cheer for a minute before signaling for them to quiet. Now, some of you might be wondering just who it was that brought the motherland to ruin. I'll tell you who it was. It was, in part, the fault of those darn Judeo-Bolsheviks. There's no denying that. However, the ones most des deserving of the blame for of a fury are those corrupt fascist pretenders in Berlin corrupted by Jewish whispers and the wealth of Zion. We'll crush them, all of them, and take back the motherland for the sake of Russians and Russians alone. Today, we rest. Tomorrow, however, we prepare to bring fire of heck down upon every German who continues to obey the orders of the Jew. Even as a rare few slipped away, out of fear or out of disgust, the masses began to cheer once more. The final victory was in sight, and they would deliver it to their vase, no matter the cost. The broken world awaits in darkness. With a new vigor, the vase was ready to face whatever threat is in front of them. And there we go. Now that was going to end this campaign. Thank you for playing, which is awesome. However, I do want to see what happens if we can take out Kim Il-sung, just to see if we can get rid of the leader. That's so much manpower. Do we core everything already? No, we haven't core everything yet. Well, that's that's a lot of manpower. I guess Russia does have a lot of manpower, I guess, technically. 34, there's more people who are not part of our core population than who are, are of our core population, which is kind of weird, but makes sense. Makes some serious sense. Last of the NAGUA. The small house just outside the lonely village didn't appear as if the as HQ of a terrorist group, but then again, if it did, Kim Il-sung would have been captured a long time ago. So once a high-ranking officer of the Northeast Anti-Japanese United Army, or the NAGUA for short, Kim had risen to become the leader as Japan conquered China and outer Manchuria, dashing his hopes of the once again returning to Korea. Now he was a terrorist, hiding in bunkers and homes, planning attacks on garrisons and railroads. Although successful campaigns were beginning to wane, either ever since the Russian government had taken over out of Manchuria, the Russians were much more efficient than the Japanese at hunting down his group. Black shirts raids on the NAJUA hideouts continued to grow, and its members continued to dwindle. As the sun set low over the horizon, Kim could no longer focus on his plans. What did they matter anyway? It's not like they had enough members to carry them out. The remnants of the NAJUA now hid out in his village, hiding in with the locals. Kim decided to head upstairs and maybe even get some sleep if he could. Before, but before, he had even made it past the window. What he saw outside shocked him to the score. The Blackshirts had found them already. Dark trucks continued to pull into the village, emptying out large groups of Blackshirt soldiers, rounding up anyone they deemed suspicious. It would only be a matter of time before they decided to visit his home and surely kill him on sight. He had to escape while he had still had time. Moving quick, quietly out of the back door, Kim ran into the deep forest just outside the village. Shouts came from behind him, but if the Blackshirts were chasing him, it was too late. Kim had prepared an escape plan just for this moment, and he already knew where the small safe house miles deep into the forest was, but Kim knew he would never be able to reappear, reappear again. The NAJUA was dead, and another enemy to Japan's empire had fallen once more. Let's hope he never rears his ugly face again. Oh, we get a core that. We get more stability. Look at that. That's really cool. Um, do we... Oh, okay, so too bad we didn't get to kill him. You know, that's actually really cool that he still exists. Maybe when TNO2 comes out, that you can actually have, like, probably a communist uprising with Kim Il-sung here, depending if he lives or not. I don't know if he can live, continue living, or just he dies, potentially, some other times, since we're still on moderate strength for that, that group. But regardless, really just regardless, if you enjoy the campaign, leave a like. I really enjoy it, especially these last few episodes. So leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!